Acids and bases. So what's the big deal here and why be so worried about them? Well, they're everywhere. Look at that. I mean, you can go to the extreme and you can dump a very strong base down the drain to dissolve hair. Or you could, you know, with all the food flavorings, eat a banana. There's this is pretty much everywhere. Now, not to say all this stuff is strong. Only one of them is really strong up there, that Drano, but these acid-based properties are, man, essential for pretty much everyday life here. So being able to understand what's going on really, why is this an acid, why is this a base, what do acids do, what do bases do? Now, way back when, Mr. Arrhenius, when he was Mr., yeah, uh, seemed to me he was a genius. By the age of three, he taught himself to read. That's crazy, right? But anyway, he had this crazy idea that you could have ions in solution. You have something in solution that's permanently charged. Well, they did, obviously didn't like that idea. Right? He got a D on his PhD defense, had a heck of a time finding a job. Then, I don't know, like 1903 or something, he wins the Nobel Prize. So I think he really showed him. But, yeah, for his ideas, he's right on. Okay, now there's a problem. When we think of acids, Genevieve, we had last semester we were talking about acids. We had all these different reactions, like acids reacting with bases and things. But if you looked at a chemical formula, and you'd point and you'd say, oh, that's probably an acid compound because why? Had that H out front. And you'd point at this compound, oh, that's a base because it has a what? OH. And that's great. But how does NH3 fit in the picture? Right? It's supposed to be a base. I don't see the OH. Or you have all these aprotic and you have acid action. Now, aprotic, what the heck? No, no, no name here. A product, Lewis. What would that mean? A product. Now, to give you a hint, I don't know how much of a hint. Probably too much of a hint. Product means there's protons everywhere, like water. Water is a product solvent. A product would mean there's none. There's no H's anywhere. How can you have acid and base properties if there's no protons even anywhere to be seen? Well, there are. So we have to have three theories in acid and bases. I don't like it, but it's really three ways of saying the exact same thing. So all of these theories have to agree. So if you just keep in mind that plus, oh, that's acid, OH minus, oh, that's base, you can really make sense of all three of these. So for example, let's start at the top one, the, the guy who got a D on his defense, Arrhenius. Jessica Vaughn, when an acid is put in water, it's going to produce acid H plus. Right. All right. When a base is put in water, according to Mr. Arrhenius Mariella, it's going to produce OH. And that's what we're traditionally used to thinking about. Okay. Arrhenius' idea. Lewis. Now Victoria we had the Lewis term once before. Remember what it was with? With, do you hear Matteo? He said it, with dot structures. And it's coming. We're going to have to do it again. Lewis is big on the electron, right? He figured them out pretty well. Had a good handle on it. And acid, now remember, think of acid. That's this, right? It is a species, Mallory, that can accept or donate electrons. Think of the H+. Plus. What could... It cannot accept. It's positive. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay. A base must be a species then that what? Donates electrons. Okay. Third theory. Ron said Lowry. Adrian. An acid is a species that donates. Again, I think all these theories have to be in line. They all have to really agree with one another. 
Acid is something that has a lot of what? It gives them up. H pluses, right? Here's an H plus. Here you go. Well, then in turn, the base is going to be the dude that accepts the the H, right? The acid gives them up. The base grabs them. Okay. Because, well, you'll see in a little bit, but you have, like I said, you have different situations. Like NH3, you call it a base, but there's no hydroxide there. So you can't talk about Arrhenius then. And we're going to talk about some acid-base reactions that involve transferring electrons. Well, then you can't talk about Arrhenius or Lewis. Oh, sorry, you can't talk about Arrhenius or bronsted lowry So that's kind of why three theories are needed, but... Bronsted Lowry's got some special terminology with them, Shelby. It's blank acid base pairs. They differ only by the presence of an H plus. What do they call them? Conjugate. Conjugate. I always say conjugate. Conjugate. Okay. Conjugate acid base pairs. They differ only by an H plus. Okay. So, for example, here's a reaction. And these conjugate acid-base pairs, Javier, there's always one on one side of the reaction and the other pair is on the opposite side. Do you see two compounds, one on each side? They only differ by an H+. Plus. Yeah, that's a good one. H3O and this guy, H2O. They only differ by an H+. Plus. Notice how the, H, the H3O has to have, it has an extra height, it has to have that plus. because They have to differ by an H+, plus, not just an H. Okay. Which one of those? It is. Two hydrogens on H2O and three hydrogens on, we're looking at a conjugate acid-base pair. We're tearing it up and looking at just two compounds in that reaction. Not overall, we just want these two guys. Which one of those, Eddie, that Javier picked is the conjugate acid? Which one would you say is the conjugate acid? H3O. How do you tell? He's got an additional proton. There's our conjugate acid. Well, that means this guy must be our conjugate base. Okay. Vanessa, another conjugate acid-base pair, same problem. You'd say the the F minus and the which one of those is the conjugate acid, Amanda? The H F, yeah. I mean, this guy must be the base. You know what's the trick to this? Well, kind of, doesn't. Exactly. On each side, there has to be an acid and a base. Once you figure out the easy one, what I mean is, if this is the base, this one has to be the acid. Yeah, all right. Okay. How about in. You have to have an acid and a base on each side. Ray. B. Okay, she's so NH4 plus, and what else? Conjugate pair is going to be. Yeah, he called even the right one. He called that the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Yeah, so the other one, we really don't even need to figure it out. These have to be conjugates. And if this one's an acid, this has to be the, the base. That's that base. This has to be the acid. Okay. Okay. So what actually exists in water? These bare protons, H+, plus, or Jessica Rojas? How do you call this? What's the name for that ion? Hi, hydronium. Right. Okay. 
Hydrogen ion doesn't exist. Air protons don't exist in water. Instead, they instantly seconds combine with an H2O molecule to make H3O plus. Right? It didn't look like if you want to see the math. Okay. Charged balance on both sides, atoms. But let's take a look at an animation of this. I think it might be a little insightful. Uh, okay. Do you recognize that beaker, Matteo? And what are these things? Well, I can't draw on there. Yeah, what are these molecules? H2O, do you reckon? So the, the big red ball must be the oxygen atom. The little white guys are the hydrogen atoms. Okay. So you see them floating around there doing what water does. But what they're going to do is they're going to introduce some HCl gas. Now, do you remember, Aldo, what was so special about HCl? It's on the list of six. I don't know if you remember this. Strong acid. So HCl cannot exist in water. It immediately, what's the technical word? Dis, well, better if you say dissociate. Dissociate is acid. You're right, Adrian. But it sounds better if you say dissociate. Dissociates into H plus plus Cl minus. Okay? But that H plus, you're going to see, there they are. See the HCl? Bubbling out. But it's not going to stay there. It instantly, it's, this is way too slow of an animation, but they get the point across. It, right? They're going to break up, and you make a bunch of hydroniums. Right? And you have these, and they can't show the charge in the animation, but the green uh, should have a negative charge spread out over them. The hydroniums should have a positive charge spread out over them. Okay? And that's what HCl looks like if you had a solution of it. Okay. So we'll do a couple of these and then we'll go to the board. Write the balanced reaction of hydroxide with hydrofluoric acid. Nick, so I've got to write a reaction here. What is going to be on my reactant side? Hydroxide, yep. And it's reacting with HF. Supposed to make fluoride and water. So Genevieve, you'd write what and what? F, F minus and H2O. Okay, we're supposed to identify each species as either an acid or a base. Okay, Lewis, what would you identify here? Okay, but acid and base. Oh. oh, let's back up a little bit. I like, you see, I don't know if you follow his logic here. It's really, I mean, it works, but it's, it's you really got to understand what he just did. He recognized H2O and OH as these conjugate acid base pairs. Right? And then he said H2O is the acid. I mean, he didn't even question it because he knows the other guy is hydroxide. Right? Did you hear him? He didn't even question it. He knows that has to be the base. Okay, now keep going. Lewis, you're on a track here. Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. Man, he's got this down. He says this is the base. It's already got an acid on that side. Or he can just look at the F minus and the HF and recognize them. But exactly right. Okay. So what I'd like to do is make this hour go as fast as we can. I think we just go to the board and knock these out and we'll call it a day. So, I have this up here, and there's chalk and erasers over here. Thank you.